Today's talk is the 12 traits of the super well. And essentially, after being in practice for over 20 years and taking care of so many people, I've worked real hard to kind of pull the best of the best out of patients and really pick their brains and see, to find out what makes them tick, what makes them uh, successful. And, and I've actually done that for a long, long time in, in most areas of my life. I found that one of the most uh, important success tools is modeling. And what I mean by that is finding somebody, if you want to do something, find somebody who does it the best and do it exactly the way they do it. What happens a lot of times is people try to modify things and tweak things uh, and do it kind of like they do it, but it, and then they don't get the same results and then they wonder why. So uh, the key is to do it exactly the way the best person's doing it and try to, to mimic that. It's almost like a, a recipe. You know, if you modify anything, you're not going to get the same result. But to even dive deeper, you want to be around those people as much as you can. So when I started practice, I spent as much time, uh, I traveled around the country visiting the best chiropractors, the best offices I could find, and just to watch them. So not only would I get their procedures, but I can see how they functioned, how they communicated with the patient, how they, so it goes beyond just the procedural stuff. You actually want to get into kind of the, almost the mindset or the philosophy, the mannerisms, uh, all of that. So, uh, so I've been studying people and successful people for a long time because I knew that, you know, everybody talks about success and, and they think about money and they think about um, houses and cars, but um, we see that that just doesn't cut it. You know, I don't know if you saw on the news today, Kate Spade, they said committed suicide. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Uh, that's like a Robin Williams when you heard that. So uh, that money, fame, fortune doesn't cut it, yet we still strive for fame, fortune, all that, but we forget all the, the stuff that is so much deeper and more, more important than that. And so when we talk, when I talk about, when I use the word super well, it's not just about health even, because it can be health too. People pinpoint certain things with health like body fat or what's your blood pressure, or what's your cholesterol, or that's not, that's not well. Well, uh, there are a lot of people that have 6% body fat that are super depressed or or have uh, the best blood markers and biomarkers uh, they can possibly have, but are miserable. Um, so when I talk about super well, it, it basically entails bringing a lot of things together uh, to, to, to create optimal health and wellness, uh, meaning financial success, uh, good relationships, healthy body weight, having energy, um, uh, feeling connected, uh, feeling a sense of purpose, uh, that kind of stuff. And so when, I, when someone comes to my office, and there really isn't a person, a person that kind of does it all perfect, so you pick and choose from different people. And so when I have somebody that comes in and they're 85 years old and they're fit and they're working in their garden and they're happy and they're healthy and they've been married for, you know, 60 years, I kind of pick their brain. I ask them some questions because I want to know what what makes them tick. And uh, I did that when I was started practice. I, I found the best chiropractors. I did uh, uh, when I started to have kids. I took the best dads I could find out to lunch. Pick their brain. You know, did you did you spank? Did you not spank? Did you ground? Did you not ground? How did what would you do for birthdays? I wanted to find out what they did, and that's not. I'm not going to do exactly what they did, but if I ask enough questions and get enough information, then I can kind of filter out and tease out some of the best stuff that works for me. Um, I used to water ski at SeaWorld, and when I wanted to learn a new trick, I went to the best person on the team because we had the best barefoot skier in the, in the world. We had the best uh, freestyle aerialist in the world. So when I wanted to learn a new trick, I would find the person that did it the best, and I would go ask them to teach me. And, and inevitably, I would end up doing the trick almost exactly like them because they taught me how they did it, and I would mimic them exactly. I remember learning how to do a, a helicopter spin, a 360 degree spin off of a ramp. And I still remember the guy teaching me, he, uh, Jeff Schmick, he was on the Pro Tour, he was on ESPN every week. And uh, he kept telling me to lift my chin, let go of the rope, and let it just spin me around and just land. 
and I couldn't let go of the rope. I kept pulling on it, and there would be slack in the rope. I kept doing it, and he finally pulled up and said, here's the deal. If you grab that rope one more time, I'm not coming back and picking you up, and you're going to swim in, and I'm done. I'm not teaching you. He goes, take the hand off the rope, lift your chin, and I did that, came around, landed, and, it was, and never had a problem again. So the key is not only knowing what to do, but then actually doing it. Because a lot of us know what to do when it comes to health and wellness, but we just don't tend to do it. So, so I'm gonna, I'm still gonna use my slide thing here because I've got some notes on it. But a trait is a distinguishing quality or characteristic, and uh, and uh, so I came up with, essentially, I came up with ten traits that I found, and then I added two, and they weren't exactly traits; they were more uh, like. Uh, philosophies or paradigms, but I added them as traits because they, they were super important. And the way I had it laid out uh, was kind of from the most obvious to the least obvious and maybe even the most important. But if I did it that way, I'm doing six today and I'm going to do six ne next month. So if I did the first six and they were the least exciting, you guys would be not too excited. And you may not come back next time. So I kind of switched it up a little bit and I'm actually going to start uh, the first one. Um, which is uh, uh, the first one is defining wellness properly. And before I go on, I think it's a little ironic that I'm talking about wellness and super well, and I'm congested and I'm <laughs> stiff, right? All right, you already noticed that. So I went skiing last week, and on our lake, the first time you go skiing, you get kind of an inoculation. You get dosed with all this bacteria. You get kind of this kind of a thing, and then you kind of have to uh, kind of work it out. And I said that to a patient, and they were like. Well, aren't you supposed to be above the water if your water's near? You know? So, so yeah. So I think it's a little funny that I'm <laughs> sniffling away up here talking about wellness. But so define wellness properly. Um, that's one of the keys uh, to most people is they have to understand what it is. And I already touched on that. You know, wellness or being well or having a great life isn't having the biggest house or having the fastest car. It isn't having uh, six percent body fat. It's about all of that coming together. Uh, in you know, medicine in particular, they put all their emphasis on blood work and things like bl blood pressure and cholesterol, and they won't even care about if you like what you do for a living or if you are in a good relationship. They don't care at all. So, um, so wellness is uh, the people that I take care of that really get it. They understand that there's, you know, people talk about keys of wellness, elements of wellness, or pillars of wellness. I use the word elements uh, and basically five elements of wellness and different people have broken it down differently but uh, there's uh, physical, social, emotional, spiritual, environmental and those all work together so some people will have the, the physical part all together but maybe the uh, spiritual part is a disaster or they're super strong spiritually but their finances are a disaster so I always felt like you can kind of have it all um, um, at the same time and that's defining wellness properly um, and too many people too much put too much emphasis on the other stuff and like I said with Kate Spade I saw that I was just like it's a perfect example of I mean she had to have all the money and, and friends and everything so I didn't it, none of the details were released I'm interested to see what what the deal was um, but uh, you know and, and the other thing is is if somebody loves big houses then they should build a big house if they can do that but if they're building a big house because their neighbor built a big house and they want a bigger house, then that's not well. Does that make sense? Or if somebody loves race cars or fast cars or expensive cars, get an expensive car. So the other thing is finding what you love to do and doing it. Um, I had a buddy, he would buy expensive stuff and his family thought he was crazy and it wasn't that he wanted expensive stuff, he just re would research and find the best quality stuff he could find and, and that's what he would buy. He wanted high quality stuff. So um, that was that would have been more uh, well, and if he was buying it just to buy the more expensive stuff than everybody else, then it wouldn't be well. So, defining wellness properly is uh, is is the nut is is one trait, and I, I'll, I've got some of these. These are just the six traits I'm going to go over tonight. A simple list, just so you have them, so um, you don't have to memorize them. Um, the second trait, and this is common sense, simple. They 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 kind of seek out and 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 eat real whole foods. Um, they kind of avoid a lot of the uh, the garbage. They look for the, the farmers markets. They look for a lot of them have gardens or they have friends that have gardens, and so they're looking for whole real foods. Uh, 
again, the older population gets that because they ate a lot of whole real foods. It wasn't until kind of our generation that uh, it's synthetic, you know, artificial dyes and food colorings and and uh, and and sweeteners and all this stuff, and and so the healthiest people obviously are going to eat the most real uh, whole foods. They minimize junk food and fast food. And again, this doesn't mean you never have fast food or you never have junk food. In fact, the, the super well or the, the healthiest people that I take care of, they, they don't get fanatical about it because that would be not well. They At a birthday party, they will have cake and ice cream. I took a chiropractor to a baseball game once when I was in college. I was doing some work with him and he brought his son, son along and he had this little cooler. And in the cooler, he had his soy dogs and his uh, or, or something chips and I couldn't believe it because we're going to the, the baseball game you know let's like have one of those nasty hot dogs that uh, are probably full of all kinds of garbage but so there's a time and a place to kind of uh, blow it off a little bit because this is our life and if you're going to be well you can't stick to a super super strict diet all the time and you don't need to unless you're managing a really delicate condition um, the super well they understand uh, that you are what you eat. Our cells are made up of the, the nutrients that go into our body. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Hippocrates said food, uh, food is medicine and it used to be medicine until they couldn't patent food and so they started to make synthetic stuff uh, so that they could patent it and sell it as drugs. Uh, most of the chemotherapy drugs, most of the other drugs out there are plant derivatives. They're plant-based stuff but they take a molecule off, put a different molecule on and then they can patent it. Um, because what's the point of promoting a plant-based medicine if everyone can go get that plant? It's just not, you won't hear about it. Um, you know, these people also see the relationship between food and chronic illness. Uh, because somehow in medicine and doctors, there's no relationship, there's no correlation. It's kind of, oh, it doesn't matter what you eat, you eat whatever you want. Um, but they, they see the relationship that, and if you pay attention, you'll feel that. When you get away from something like fast food and then you go back to fast food, you almost can't tolerate it uh, until you start start getting, you know, eat it again and then your body just acclimates to it. So we don't even know. When you eat a really good like grape or a really good uh, tomato out of somebody's garden, it's dramatically different. I remember like Subway, you know, you eat Subway, it almost like, I feel like sometimes I get the sandwich that they use as a display, you know, the plastic, all plastic one. I mean, it looks good. It's got the tomatoes, the cucumbers, everything, but it, there's no taste and it just, it seems fake. So, um, the other thing about eating, uh, uh, the, eat, the way they eat is a lot of times they'll prepare food so that it's prepared because what's the, what's the most difficult time to get healthy food is when you're on the run and you need something fast. You can't go into a gas station and get something healthy. I mean, and sometimes now they have fruit up there and I can't imagine where that comes from. Um, that's even scary to eat. Um, and simple things like uh, kids, you know, they'll pack kids' lunches as opposed to buying. You know, I know that as much as they tried all the revisions they make in these school lunches, if you look into it, that's kind of crazy too because uh, I think they consider uh, ketchup uh, a vegetable or something. It's bizarre. Um, so. The, the second trait would be to eat whole real foods and that again is pretty basic. The next one is another basic one but I'm going to get it out of the way and that's they incorporate movement into their life. Um, the healthiest people don't resent exercise, uh, they, they, they value it, they, they, they honor it, they, they look for it. Um, so I've said it once in another talk but I remember a lady had bungee corded her garbage cans to the back of her SUV and pulled it to the end of her driveway and her driveway wasn't even that long. It was crazy, you know, I mean she couldn't, she has, we've gotten so far away from this idea that we need to move that uh, that that we will do anything to avoid moving. In fact, I'm using this so I just don't even have to lean forward or remote control. The remote control probably has done more harm to, to the U.S. than most things. Uh, in Japan when they introduced mechanized farming, it reduced the uh, activity level by 50%. So when you reduce the activity level by 50% in any species, there's going to be a repercussion. So movement, um, humans have a genetic requirement to move so much and uh, we need to do that. And when you don't get that requirement, we're going to have some problems. 
um, it's a required nutrient for our brains. It's not just something we do to fit into a, a bathing suit for spring break or a dress at weddings. Um, so I know for us, our kids, we knew they were going to be sitting in school. So when they were little, we incorporated uh, what we called BizJack Boot Camp. In the, be in the mornings, we would just have our kids do exercise. We'd let them each kind of thing. They'd pick three exercises and they would do it, but we made it fun. We, we didn't make it exercise. We let them pick. They could do crab crawl. They could do push-ups. They could run sprints up and down the driveway. We'd time them. We would do things like have them set up obstacle courses. We'd let them set them up, and then they'd run them, and we'd time them. And it's kind of like hidden exercise, right? So they didn't know they were exercising. And I even have to do that for myself. But that's what, like, athletics are. Like, if you're going to go for a walk with a friend in a park, that's exercise. But it's hidden because you're going for a walk with a friend. So, um, uh, but, but the healthiest people we take care of, they kind of welcome exercise. But, you know, if you don't love the elliptical machine, don't do the elliptical machine. If you don't love swimming, don't do swimming. You've got to find something you love. So if you love it, you're going to keep doing it. And that's what they do. Um, but they stay active. Um, and they incorporate family activities around, or family uh, events around act activities. So they may go for bike rides, or they may do a hiking trip, or they may do a camping trip. So it's not just a sit on the beach kind of a thing, or, um, or, or go to a movie every time. I know my, my son loves to go to movies, and I take his friends to movies, and they go all the time. But I usually try to get them, we'll take the dog, and I'll t get these kids to get their oldest clothes, and we'll go, and we'll get them muddy as can be and, and push them so that they, they get some movement. Um, the, you know, they, uh, there was an author, and I forget his name now, he said we're the craziest species because we're, what other, who else would drive around the parking lot at the gym for 10 minutes to find a parking spot to go in to run on the treadmill? We don't even make sense, you know, we don't, we're, we're a bizarre species. So the third trait uh, out of the 12 would be to incorporate movement and regular movement. The fourth trait that I see in the healthiest people we take care of uh, is that they, they, they're not insurance dependent. And this is a big one because somehow we've equated insurance with health. And with all the health care reform, everyone's talking about insurance and all the insurance reform, it was all about more people getting insured and, and who can get insurance. Better insurance does not equal better health. It, it equals better access to more medicine and more medical stuff. And good insurance is important, but it doesn't mean healthier because you're still tapping into a system that doesn't promote health and doesn't make you healthier. It actually uh, just more, does more diagnostics, it does more testing, it does more uh, uh, medicine and more surgeries and more procedures. So um, it's important to understand what insurance does and doesn't do, and they understand that. It's good to have insurance. We're seeing a lot more people go into those high deductible policies uh, because it's affordable and they use it for catastrophic things. So when my daughter blew out her ACL, you know, I have a $10,000 deductible. Okay, here's my $10,000 because it's a catastrophic event, but I've saved X amount of money over the years and HSAs or health savings accounts or flex accounts because now you have access to some money that you might be able to use for other things that your insurance wouldn't pay for anyway. Because insurance companies don't really pay for what makes us healthy anyway. They don't pay for gym memberships. They don't pay for good running shoes. They don't pay for uh, 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 healthier foods. We have to pay for that anyway. I always thought the HSA should be used where at the grocery store you could split your organic food and your regular food and use your H HSA money to pay for the organic food because you're buying it because it's healthier. It's improving your health. So um, so people are, are, are rethinking insurance because insurance just has not, it just doesn't equate to uh, better health. Um, and they realize that they need to make uh, their health care choices, not insurance companies. I have patients all the time that say, listen, my doctor wants to order this MRI, but he or she can't because the insurance company won't approve it. That, so now the doctor can't even make the decisions. So now we've got, we've got MRI companies that will actually do MRIs for $350 for patients if they pay at the time of the service because they need the, they need the service. And if they're not going to meet their $10,000 or $5,000 deductible anyway, they can get what they need. And so people are foregoing some of the insurance. They're not waiting on it because they need the test right now. Or what if you need an MRI right now, and they're not going to give you, uh, that you have to go through six weeks of therapy. And everyone involved knows the therapy isn't going to work, but they're just doing it so they can get the MRI, which now you're two, three months down the road 
to get what you need. So insurance, uh, I used to draw a dry diagram for patients when I'd sit down and go over treatment plans. I'd say, okay, here's a circle, this is me, here's a circle, this is you. You've come to me for help, I'm going to do everything I can to help you. And there's two arrows there. We have this relationship. I said, over here is insurance company. They, you've paid them to help you with your health care expenses. But I don't really have an agreement with them. I'm not going to, I wanted them to know that our, our, it's me and you working together. This is a dysfunctional partner here that doesn't care about you, doesn't care about me. All they care about is profit and money. And they make profit, more profit, by paying for less. So it's dysfunctional if we think they're going to give you the best thing possible for your health. So the healthiest people I take care of understand that. Um, and, and they're getting away from the idea of relying on insurance. And one of the traits I'll go over next time comes down to finances and, uh, uh, and how, uh, how healthy people kind of are thinking financially. And one of those things is they understand that they allocate certain funds for healthy living. So that uh, trait number four is uh, they're not insurance dependent or they understand insurance's role in, this, uh, uh, in, in health and wellness. The, um, the fifth is that uh, the healthiest people I take care of, they take breaks and they celebrate, or and or they celebrate. Meaning, we work hard all the time, but as a country, we take the fewest vacation days of any other country. I mean, people are not even taking the, 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 the small amount of vacation days they're getting. So we gotta step back and go, what are we doing all this for? Um, so they take breaks, they take vacations. Um, uh, it's kind of that work hard, play hard mentality, which I've uh, uh, adopted quite well in my life. Um, I don't mind working hard, but I love to play hard. You look at people like Richard Branson. I mean, he works super hard, but he plays really hard. Um, so vacations and getaways. And some people go, if, if finances are an issue, I'm not talking about two weeks in Hawaii. In fact, I think people should do more frequent trips, shorter trips. Uh, because for me, I don't need two weeks, but more frequent tips gives you something to look forward to. And I always say to plan them ahead because now you have something to look forward to. I remember we took our two uh, girls to a concert one time and we were going to surprise them. And it was Hannah Montana or something ridiculous like that. But it was a big deal. And at the last minute, we told them and they were ex almost overwhelmed. And it was great and we had a great time, but I thought, man, I could have told them about that two weeks ago and gotten two more weeks out of this whole deal of them being excited. So when you plan a vacation, part of that whole, the benefit of that is knowing it's on the books and knowing it's coming. And so, um, and it could be something as simple. We used to just go to the Twinsburg Hilton Garden Inn because we knew someone there and they would get us a deal on the room and we'd order from Blue Canyon room service and we'd play in the pool. Um, and sometimes we'd bring the kids. I'm just kidding. Uh, but... But, and the kids didn't know any different. And they, that, they, at that age, they could have been anywhere. In fact, I have a patient. He said that his, they used to go on this big camping trip uh, for the summer. They'd go f away for two months, and they lived in, like, Cuyahoga Falls. Well, it turned out that they would drive at night. They'd fall asleep, and they'd wake up, and they'd be there, and they'd be there, and, 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 and the dad would still get work done because he would disappear. Here they would go to Stowe. And the dad would leave, and he'd go to work. And, and they just thought they were in another state. They didn't even know any different. So, um, and, uh, and the mom could run home if they forgot something. It was, it was pretty wild. Um, so more frequent trips. It gives you something to look forward to. Simple stuff, inexpensive stuff. But we need to rejuvenate our battery. There's no question that we run low, and we've got to rejuvenate our battery. And, 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 and there's a big uh, hiccup sometimes for people on thinking that's selfish because uh, when they take time for themselves, especially when you're uh, taking care of kids or you're taking care of an ailing parent, the best thing you can do is get away when you think you, think you can't, but what happens is you come back, you come back rejuvenated, don't you? Or if, if you go out for a night with your friends or, or dinner or lunch with a friend, you're, you come back more patient, more kind. Um, you know, 
you know, I would call them for new moms, I would say that like the remember you love us trips, you know, you go away, you come back, because when you're gone, you remember you love us. When you're there all the time, you, you might start hating us. So, um, but that's the same way. You've got, even your job, when you get away from it, you realize there's things you like about your job. You get back, you're excited about it, uh, but you've got to rejuvenate the battery because otherwise you run low and then you get run down, then you get sick, and then you get frustrated and angry and all that other stuff. And it's like an operating system. We're like an operating system. They say, and I don't understand how it all works, but shut down the router once in a while. It's important because it reboots. Or the computer, you want to shut it down once in a while. Well, we are like that. We need to reboot. We need to actually shut down. And don't be apologetic about it. I, I mean, you know, I used to be like that. People were like, oh, where are you going now? And I used to be like, almost reluctantly tell them, no, I'm, like, I'm going to Florida. What are you doing? You know, kind of thing. So um, there's nothing to be apologetic about, especially if, if you can do it and you need to do it. So the fifth trait, um, we'll probably go another 10 minutes. So I'm going to do six today. So the fifth trait is take breaks and celebrate. <clears throat> the uh, sixth trait is that uh, the healthiest people I take care of, they seek alternatives. Uh, and that kind of makes sense since we're an alternative office, so I would be around those people. But these are people that don't buy into one way of thinking, especially when it comes to healthcare. Because when a doctor tells somebody, this is your only option, what that means is, this is your only option that I know for you. Because I can't tell you how many people we take care of that go, why didn't I hear about this sooner? Or why didn't, I, why didn't anyone tell me months ago? Or I wish I would have known about this years ago. Um, but they weren't looking for it. And the other thing that happens is people say, maybe a patient with migraine headaches may tell their friend that has migraine headaches, say, listen, I had migraines, I don't have them anymore, I tried everything else, I went to this chiropractor, he did some things to my back and my neck, and, and they're gone. I don't believe in chiropractic. And I'm thinking, if I had migraine headaches, I would believe in eating petrified dog poop. <laughs> if, they, if I knew you a little bit and you said it helped me, I would take it. Or there's a little troll under the bridge over there. I would say, how do I find him? You know, so uh, they seek alternatives. Um, you know, and, and they understand that they need to seek alternatives if they're going to get different results. Because the average person, and I always use that 1 to 10, and, and I talked about it in Twinsburg about the, the problem of 7. Everyone kind of ends up at a 7, which is very average. And very few people hang out at 9 or 10. And, and they, when they get down to 4 or 5, it's enough pain that they really get after it and try to get back, but they get up to a seven. So most people are at a seven, and so if you want a seven, you just keep doing what you're doing or you keep doing what everybody else is doing. But if you want something better or bigger, uh, you need to start seeking alternatives and looking for other things. And that's what the healthiest people and the, the super well really do. Um, and a football coach, you know, if a football coach continues to lose, they get fired. So what people are doing is they're firing mainstream medicine, not completely. They're firing it as their, as their primary care office. We've become a primary care office for a lot of people because they know that we, have, uh, uh, we don't have the resources to take care of all their problems, but we know the resources. We have resources to send them to to get what they need. Uh, we know the best shoulder surgeon or the best... Uh, uh, spinal surgeon if they need that or the person that's going to do the best, best hip replacement. So they, they've, they've fired mainstream medicine as their primary resource. Now we still need primary medicine and we'll use it and we need it but uh, they know to use it for what it's best for which are broken bones, stitches, uh, emergency procedures. Um, but they're looking for, the healthiest people are looking for a better way. And this, now more than ever, people are doing that because they're really realizing their doctors don't have the answers, uh, the stuff they've tried isn't working, and so they're looking for a natural, more natural, safer, more effective means of uh, managing their health. But not just health. Um, when I say seek alternatives, they're looking for alternative investments because they want better finances. Uh, they're looking for alternative um, um, seminars and shows and documentaries. They're looking for other things. They're not just looking whatever, whatever. So it's not just about medicine and healthcare and, and those kind of things. And they're tapping in as far as healthcare goes, things like homeopathy, Reiki, acupuncture, chiropractic care, massage, uh, reflexology. There are so many options out there right now. And I still love when somebody comes to me and they say, oh, my Cleveland Clinic doctor said that 
chiropractic, it, it, it won't help me. And I'm like, well, why do they have chiropractors at the Cleveland Clinic? You know, they have all the stuff at the Cleveland Clinic now, so they know it works. Um, so, uh, it, you know, we've got intuitive healers, we've got uh, functional medicine, so there are a lot of other options out there. But your doctors aren't going to know that, they're not going to tell you about that. Um, and they don't uh, do things just in the time of need. They, they, they act uh, preventatively when it comes to health. So most of the patients we see in our office now have been through a crisis and now they're fixed or they're, they're, we're maintaining their, pre their, their, their situation so they don't have a relapse and they want to maximize or, or optimize uh, uh, their function. So, um, you know, if, uh, if, you're, if you're not going to seek alternatives, I mean, well, and I'm talking to a group right now. I mean, one of the traits I could say is of, of the super well are people that go to many lectures and seminars on a Tuesday night, on a summer night. Um, and I don't know how many people were at the seminar last night in Aurora, but, you know, there are a lot of little things around here uh, that may sound interesting, but people don't know what they are. But seeking alternatives is critical if you're going to reach a level of health and lifestyle that is above average. Um, so that would be uh, the sixth, uh, so the, here, here's the, the six uh, traits of the 12, and I'll go over the other six next time. We're actually already coming up on that 45 minutes, and I'll, and I'll open it up for questions, because I love questions and answers. But, you know, they define wellness properly, which is essential. And that's why I did that first, because if you don't have the right definition, you're, you're going to wander aimlessly. Uh, so you need the right definition of wellness. Uh, they eat real whole foods and they seek whole foods. Even in restaurants, and you know, I order a salad. One of my rules is I kind of get a salad every time I go out to lunch. That's just my thing so that I don't have to look at the menu too hard and I know. And people kind of think, a salad? Oh, really? You're a grown man while you're eating a salad? But the salads I get are big salads and now you can get big salads and you can add stuff to it and I always do that. It probably drives the server crazy. but. Uh, add this, remove that, can I get this, a side of that. Um, but, uh, but you can do it. Restaurants now, even the Italian restaurants, a lot of them are supplementing, or you can supplement zucchini noodles for pasta. Um, and so you can actually eat some of this food. You can get chicken alfredo with uh, zucchini noodles. So you're not eating rice cakes and, 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 and ridiculous foods. You're eating good foods. Um, incorporate movement. You can't be afraid of exercise. You can't uh, try to, your whole, whole life can't revolve around how to make my life easier. And that's what we've done as humans. So to be active and incorporate activities uh, around physical movement is good. They found that walking meetings are uh, actually more effective than sitting meetings. Um, probably because the brain's functioning better. Uh, healthy, the, the super well are not insurance dependent. Uh, they understand insurance for what it is. And back to that insurance, we understand insurance uh, when it comes to auto and home insurance, but we don't understand the health insurance. We think it's different. And let me explain this. If you have car insurance and you're in an accident or there's, uh, you have flood damage in your car, you would expect the insurance company to pay. But would you ever expect your insurance company to pay uh, to do the oil changes or rotate the tires. You would never do that, right? And when it comes to the house, you would never expect them to pay for gutter cleaning or pressure washing the siding. You would expect, you know, if there's a fire or if there's some damage. So when it comes to health insurance, we still expect them to pay for all our stuff. And it's just not the case. It's like every other insurance. It pays for crisis. Uh, and that's what it's for. It's not there to pay for your vitamins and your minerals or even your natural uh, types of care. So. I left that part out, but so they're not insurance dependent. The other is they take breaks and celebrate, and that's critical. You've got to do that because uh, we got to remember what we're doing all this hard work for anyway. I know a lot of you in here, and you do that. You do breaks. You know, you go skiing. You know, I mean, what what are we doing it for? When you go skiing, uh, or when you go uh, travel, I mean, it it fills you up. It it, it rejuvenates you. So uh, that's another trait. And then they seek alternatives, and that's. Uh, they are not going to be accepting of the status quo. And if you are, or if they would be, they'll, they'll get what everybody else is getting, which is average, uh, mediocre outcomes. And there are so many people, if you look at most of the 
uh, groundbreaking people or the people that have really made big change, they are always met with adversity at first. They're always criticized heavily. Heretics, you know, they're until there's till till there's, till there's a till they realize what they were saying was true, and so uh, you're going to have friends that are going to think you're crazy. I mean, people said I shouldn't be a chiropractor. Oh, you can't practice in chiropractic, or you know, there's, you, you just got to uh, do things differently than other people. Um, so I'm going to actually uh, open it up for questions. We have probably got about ten minutes for questions. Um, any questions? Well, yeah. You mentioned I think the first three was that you define wellness. If I understand what you said, you define wellness for you because it's a balance of things rather than one set. Yeah, for sure. And it is a balance. And you've seen it in seminars and things where, and you might have done it for your clients, where you draw like almost spokes on a wheel and you you lay out you know your finances, your your, your marriage, your your friendships and you do that and you measure them like zero to ten and where you mark them and and if they're all at a certain level if you look at it like a wheel it'll spin nice and smooth but if you got them all over it, it it's a bumpy ride so what's, what's what's what wellness is for me may not be the same as it is for somebody else exactly exactly and that's critical because if you try to buy into my model I know I, you love boating right and so some people you know, we could light up talking about boating. Someone else might be like, I don't want to set foot on a boat. So when somebody said, I remember my brother one time, he's like, we got to try these grape leaves at a restaurant. I go, I don't like grape leaves. He's like, no, 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 these are great. I go, but I don't like grape leaves. He's like, I'm ordering them. You've got to try them. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't like them. I don't want them. You know, so we got to, uh, yeah, you, it, it's different for every person. But there has to be a balance too because if something's really big in your life, like you see some people that are really strong spiritually, but financially they're in ruins or they're, you know, their business, you know what I mean? Or their business is phenomenal, but their marriage is a disaster. So no matter what is important, you still need a balance in all those things uh, or else there's, it's going to show up somewhere as uh, being bad. Yes. So, you know, all of our behavior is driven by pain and pleasure. So I will either, and they say pain is a bigger driver. I'm pretty good with pleasure, so pleasure. So I will associate massive pleasure with an outcome or massive pain with not doing something. Like I hate doing paperwork in my office. If Sue was here, she'd be nodding her head. Yes, he does. I mean, she'll have to like like trick me into doing paperwork. But I, I just associate such pain with doing this paperwork that, uh, and it could be a personal injury case where if I get this paperwork in, we might get a check for $3,000. The pleasure of the $3,000 does not outweigh the pain of the paperwork. So, and I will think of anything to do other than paperwork. I'll literally be starting to do paperwork on a break and think, you know, I bet the dog needs to get out. And I'll literally go home. So pain and pleasure. So I just try to associate massive pain with certain behaviors that are massive pleasure. And the brain doesn't know the difference between an actual event and one vividly imagined, which is so cool. So you can trick your brain into thinking stuff. So we are moved by crises. So someone may smoke and they associate massive pleasure with a cigarette um, because they won't associate the potential pain of a major health condition. But if a doctor puts up an x-ray, shows them a tumor on the lung and says, listen, you're..." You quit now, you live. If you don't, you're dead in three months. Massive pain outweighs the pleasure of that cigarette. They could quit now. Sometimes, actually, I've seen it where they can't. But you know what I mean. So I, pain and pleasure is a is a is a driving driving force. Um, and 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 so if there's something you're thinking about, like if somebody wants to embark on changing their body, I, you have to associate even maybe even superficial stuff. I've told people, listen. It's not vain to say that somebody says, if you have friends going, wow, you look great. I mean, to, to think about that and associate pleasure with that and then knowing that they're going to come to you for probably help and then you're going to be able to maybe change their lives for the better. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, we could talk about all the health benefits of, 
a, a, a fitter, healthier body, but people don't care about what's going on, on the inside. They just want to, you know, maybe know how they look. So associating massive pleasure with that outcome will outweigh the less pleasure of maybe eating that piece of cake or the pain of exercising. So it just has to be a balance because crises will be ultimately be the thing that 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 triggers to be a, 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 an action, and that's a lot of times it's too late. Yeah. It, it, it is, and uh, so yeah. So to put pictures up, that's why like, um, and the subconscious mind is so powerful. I mean, that whole law of attraction is, is a real thing. I mean, you can get into science now is coming out uh, about that. So it's it's. Uh, I mean, what we think about in 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 in, in on, on quantum physics now. It's it's it's. Uh, I'll end up doing a talk on that because it's fascinating stuff. But so to see something, to see maybe the, the, the type of body you want uh, and to see that every day on the fridge that might be a deterrent you know that keeps people going or a trip the place that you want to go or the beach you want to go to I mean massive pain and pleasure are biggest factors for me and how to drive my behavior and and that because people don't think they think such short term and and so they think I, I remember somebody said think about how you feel after the meal because you know if you eat a salad you're gonna feel pretty good after that. You know if you get a big sloppy cheeseburger with fries, it's gonna taste good right then, but you know you're gonna, halfway through it, you're gonna be like, why'd I do that? So, um, but you can form habits uh, like that. I mean, I did it with soda. When I was in high school, I didn't wanna drink soda. And I just associated Coca-Cola with just absolute terrible syrupy sugar, I pictured it. I couldn't drink it. I didn't like it. Funniest thing is, is I still really cannot drink a Coke. Now, if you put Captain Morgan in it, I can drink it. Isn't that funny? I literally probably couldn't drink a Coke, but I can drink a Captain Coke. So. And that's back to the celebrate, take breaks, right? That's part of wellness. Yes. So you talked about how powerful the brain is. Can you talk about visualization? A bit and where that fits into the whole picture. Well, I mean, it's kind of like a map. So, if you don't see where you're going, you know, you're never going to leave the house to go on a spring break trip without some a destination, right? So you need the in, in Florida isn't necessarily a destination. You you know you're going to picture a beach. So you, the more clear the what you visualize, the better, um, and the mind. There's so much good information out there right now um, uh, on, on how that helps to manifest it. Like um, when people do these like dream boards and they put up the pictures, I mean, they'll, they'll find the house that it, it'll almost some, match the picture that they have, like that they pull out of a magazine, you know, just because so visualizing is super, super important. Um, we talked at that show and your show about that group of old men that they took up to that old monastery that they had converted into a they they made everything in there look like maybe like the 1950s the music they played the magazines they had the furniture they had and they didn't have any mirrors and they basically put these guys in an environment that brought them back uh, till they were like 30 years younger and they checked biomarkers before and after in their blood and all of their biomarkers after being there were improved to a younger age because they felt younger. They were talking with guys, but you know, it, it, and so that's how powerful that that, that mind is, and that uh, the visual is, or what we see, or what we're surrounded by. Uh, even they, and when they asked, they showed pictures before and after. People that have, people that observed them said they looked X number of years younger just by being in that environment. So super, super powerful. So visualization, I mean, and what do we think about all the time? We buy into what things should be like. What should, you know, uh, what should I feel like at 50 or 60 or 70? Or what, what should marriage be like at 
10 years or 30 years or 40 years. And, and we just kind of, and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, what if you go, well, what if, I, what if that's not the way it's going to be? But you can't just say it. you got to say, what do I want it to look like? And that's to finding models. Well, that's why you want to find the people that are doing it. You know, so I have people that are 70 years old uh, that are doing things that people said can't be done. And they said, I mean, Tony Robbins did a seminar and he, he, had, he had everybody close their eyes and he said, I want you to visualize a, a 72-year-old man. I want you to, details, I want you to, what does his skin look like? What does his hair look like? How does he walk? What does his posture look like? And, and, uh, and he said, all right, now open your eyes. And uh, he had a guy up there was 72, he was in jeans and no shirt, he was ripped. And he gets down, he does push-ups, he does some jumping jacks. And, and he said, is this what you envisioned? And it wasn't even close. But for a lot of people, that just blew their whole mind, right? Because now, you know, I, I love the quote, a mind once uh, stretched by a new idea can never regain its original dimension. I love that because now you can't unsee that. Now you know that's a possibility. But if all you're around or all you're thinking about is what a 70-year-old man or an 80-year-old man should look like, well, what else are you, you that's, that's where you're going to end up for sure. So if you can envision even unrealistic stuff, you know, because um, even if you come up a little short, you're still going to be way better than, than not. But when you're around big thinkers, I'm working on an article for the paper right now, which is, you know, who you're around matters. I remember uh, they're, they're, they were coming out with these light jets. They were like six-seat jets that were much more affordable and much, they can get in and out of smaller airports, and they made sense for private pilots. Well, I told my buddy about it, and he called me and says, my uncle said, that's crazy, they're not going to, it's going to be a long time till that comes, and the insurance is going to be too much, and, and they're overpromising it, and all this stuff. And that same day, I went to lunch with a buddy of mine, super successful real estate guy, big thinker. I sit down, and he says, and he, he, he flies, he's got his pilot license also, and he said, uh, first thing he said, he goes, I think I've got a way we can get into a small jet. And he, he just rattled off this whole way of doing it, and I just remember thinking, well, what if all I did was listen to this guy? You know what I mean? So who we listen to, what we think about, that's, that's wellness. You know? that's, uh, so how big can it be? How good can it be? How much better can it be? You know? And I think, too, there's a point in our life where if we think, the moment we think that the best days are behind us, we're doomed. So the key, one of the keys to wellness, and it's not even a trait. I've come up with like 10 other traits since I've been working on this, little traits. But is to keep that, to keep thinking the next step is better. That real estate friend of mine, he's working on, and they've opened up one already, but retirement centers where you go to, that it's not a down step into retirement. It, they've got private drivers, and they've got, uh, and it's not cheap, but it's a um, pool, a gym. They've got a 24-hour chef. It's a place you would look forward to, like the, the, the X number of years you might have left. And you stay in the same room, as you step down, so you don't go to another facility, but it's a, a place that you might look forward to, and, and it's wellness oriented. And so, how cool is that? Now you can take what maybe okay, I'm going to go into this home and wind down instead of hey, this is the last part of my life. How awesome is this? You know what I mean? So to keep looking for, you hear people all the time they're like, oh, back in, I got buddies that talk about college, like that was it for them. That was the greatest time ever. So if you can keep believing that the next step can be better. I mean, that's, that's wellness, that's fun, that's, that's, but it comes down to head, I mean, the head and thinking and visualiza visualization. But how do you get a clearer picture, unless sometimes you can create it, but to see it. So that's where finding people that are doing it, because uh, there's always people, there are always people doing things that are, are bigger, better, faster, stronger, you know, um, so more stuff I would add instinct for sure I think we're the only species that doesn't listen to our gut you know we and we've been marketed to death we're told what we should wear what we shouldn't wear what we what our house should look like you go into neighborhoods they all look exactly the same you go into a town they have the pizza huts the, you know everything's the same and I've talked about it before but that's why we love authenticity right we love authentic Mexican restaurants authentic uh, uh, jewelry, you know, stuff that's that's one of a kind kind of a thing. So, um, instinct is huge. I mean, we don't we, we we've got to listen to our gut. I mean, that's 
uh, and that real estate friend of mine, I remember there was a deal. He wanted me to be involved with him, and I just said, it didn't feel right. He said, I love that you said that because every deal I've gotten into that I was uncomfortable with did not work out the way that I thought it should. And uh, so it's really important to go with gut. I mean, um, you know, with <laughs> relationships, all that stuff. I mean, I think you really got to listen to your heart um, and, and, and your gut, you know, for sure. That's an, another trait. We're going to have the 50 traits of love <laughs> super well. Uh, other questions? Yeah. I just have a thought. You mentioned Kate Spade, and I heard about that today, and at the age of 55, and as successful as she was, you know, I thought that was just um, mind-boggling. Um, I also read this morning about a 10-year-old who had hanged himself, you know, committed suicide. Um, read that on Facebook, and you hear a lot about children, you know, young people committing suicide. Have you done any research about uh, that? I mean, I read a lot about stuff, but for me, I think all that stuff comes up. The way I explain it or think about it is when we're empty somewhere, we fill it up with something. It may be overeating or, or, or drugs or alcohol. So I think the key is to try to stay filled up, and kids aren't getting filled up. I think the best thing I can do for my kids is, and this is just a little, I get all these little theories in my head, so... I'll share one now. Um, one of the theory, like my thought is, is people seem to be not great right now. Like their things are are so average that you know kids are looking ahead to see what is my life going to look like, right? And if they're all they see are bad relationships and maybe you know a terrible marriage and, 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 and all the stress, they make, their thought is, what do they have to look forward to? Like, this is my life. So my thought for my kids is, can I paint the best picture possible? I want them to be, I want to be there someday. You know what I mean? So I want them to strive for that. I mean, if kids don't have anything um, to strive for, I'm, they're, they're empty. They're empty in something. And, and what they eat matters. How they move matters. I mean, that stuff seems pretty superficial. But when they go in and bring in exercise programs into troubled boys' homes, uh, all of the bad stuff goes down. Their grades go up, their, their uh, fighting goes down. The, the, I mean, so that, 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 that matters. That seems kind of trivial, but exercise matters. Um, you know, they're not doing it in school. They're getting rid of PE, you know what I mean? And then they're getting this lousy lunch. They're leaving the house with a Pop-Tart and maybe a can of Coke. So there's a lot of stuff that biochemistry, biochemically, is, is not good. But... I just don't think they have a, a, a good picture of, like, what are they striving for? They talk about millennials as being lazy and not wanting to work. Um, I heard, I think it was John DeJulius said something, and this isn't going to be 100% perfect, but I heard him say they, they don't want to do the trivial stuff. And we all did trivial. I did a lot of trivial stuff, like construction work and landscaping and bartending and bar backing, whatever, um, to get where I got. And they don't want to do that, which is which is not good. But they they want something bigger. He said, if you give them a task that they're on fire for, they will go to battle for you because that's what they want. It's almost like that will fill them up. So they don't want to just do it. And so it's I think they're they're starving for something bigger. Uh, they're seeing what a big house and a fat, fancy car does. It doesn't make mom and dad happy, you know what I mean? It doesn't improve that, and I think they just see this stuff. And so I think we just, they're not getting a good model out there, and especially in certain uh, demographics where the dads leave or, you know what I mean, that's all they know, so now they don't even have the model of how to be a good. In fact, the only model they have is a, a dad that left, you know, and, and, and so there's a lot of that stuff going on. So I, I don't know. I just think they need a, a better models. They need a better... I mean, wellness, when we talk about health and wellness, if, if a community like, say, Aurora, improve their nutrition and improve their overall exercise and, um, and really implemented a true wellness program, yes, body weight would go down and, and people would be fitter and heart rates would be better and blood pressure, but I can almost guarantee productivity would go up, 
crime would probably go down, divorce rates would, you know what I mean? There would be a lot less of that stuff. So I would start there because that's a no, that's a no-brainer. I mean, that's, that's, there's no downside to that. But yeah, that, that's like, crazy. They said that kids in middle school are talking about suicide regularly. I mean, that's, that's terrible. That's crazy to me. So, but I, I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> Is that, was, is that the short answer? No. Yes? I wondered if you could share a little bit about um, motivation for those who struggle with depression and have trouble being motivated to make better choices. You know, I still think it comes down to pain and pleasure, but, you know, biochemically, you know, there are people that need medicine, right? Because they may hurt themselves or others or whatever. Um, but medicine should be a short term thing. There are some countries in Europe that you do not get an antidepressant until you do a 12-week exercise program because they have found, Duke University did a study that showed exercise was uh, as good as uh, either Zoloft or Prozac for depression. Long-term, it was better, which is so funny. It's almost like, wow, that's crazy. It's like, no kidding, because of what it does for the brain. It doesn't just uh, burn, you know, burn calories, it stimulates the brain and it produces BDNF which is brain derived neurotrophic factor which is like they call it miracle grow for the brain which helps stimulate new fibers you know and uh, new pathways so maybe you can break off and, and get around addictive behaviors and and, uh, and and create new patterns and it might come down to who you're around again who you're around if you're around the same people hearing the same stories or telling yourself the same story you know, I mean, your story is your story, and you can change that at any time. I said, I think, in Twinsburg, you know, the only thing, you know, if, if people are beating themselves up about stuff that happened six, seven, eight years ago, you don't even have a single cell in your body that's the same as that long ago. The only thing you're carrying is this story. And so uh, if you can flush the story, flush it and start create a new story. I mean, that's... And it sounds easier said than done, but some of that takes a leap of faith. It might be firing some friends or going off to a, uh, start doing a hiking, hiking the trails around here by yourself. or You know, it may take something like that. But what, what do you have to lose by breaking your old patterns and starting new ones? I see it happen all the time. Someone may come in uh, and, and we're uh, working on them and the spouse will actually call and say, listen, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because my husband is... A different person. He came in with back pain, but they're like, he is a different person. He's more, t he's more patient. He's more kind, and, and so, and all that stemmed from was me helping his body function better, his pain level reducing. So back to even health and wellness. A lot of times when people just have less pain or their blood flows better, better chemistry in your blood, you're going to be thinking clear, thinking more positive. I mean, when you come out of a gym or after a walk, do you crave? candy bars no you crave a piece of fruit you know what I mean uh, are you thinking uh, negatively or more positively more positively every time so it's it, it's a tough thing but if you can break old patterns and, and and think about the pleasure of the new life and really focus on that and visualize it and create the image that you want now you got something to strive for and if you can really not just see a picture but really associate emotions with it you have to experience it almost as if it happened already. And that sets something in motion. And that's what people, you know, the, what was it, The Secret, you know, they talked about say it, believe it. You can't just say something. You've got to experience it. And then your body starts to function in a way that starts to draw things into your life that will match that frequency of thought and that will actually start to drive you closer to your goal. And you, we've all done it in different areas of our life. But it happens the other way too, right? We start to think of negative thoughts and like, I'm the most unlucky person on the planet. And then something falls in your head, right? It's like, you, you know, it's, it, you manifest what, uh, what you think about all the time. All right, we probably should wrap it up. Any other quick questions? You're like, yeah, we've got quick questions. You just have long answers. <laughs> so I'll do the second part of this next uh, month. And I like kind of how we wrap this up because we can delve into some of your other questions. But my email, um, you can call my office for my email. I would have it up here, but I don't. Um, next week, you know what, the, when are we going to, because that's the day before the 4th of July, the first Tuesday. Should we do it like the next week, you think? Yeah, we can switch. We'll post that. But it'll probably be the second, second Tuesday of 
of July. And it'll be the second part. It'll be the second six traits of the 12 traits. So, yeah, right here. And we'll do it at 6.30, and it'll be about 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Just kidding. Any questions, you can uh, call me or email me. How's that? All right? Thanks.